Hey everybody, welcome along, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench and here we are now with part 7 of the Big Bad Buff Build for Beginners Yes, I got it right for once and um, this is part 7 as I say So, uh, we've done our cockpit, now I have done a little bit off camera I know at the beginning I said I wouldn't do any building off camera and I haven't done any building but I have done some painting off camera because I need to do it through my magnifier This is it here Okay, people do ask. This is actually uh, a daylight, daylight products, a magnifier lamp, uh, light craft, and it's um, what is it? Model number eight oh six six D two. So yeah, this is a. You, you can see it's not very well made as far as longevity goes. I've had it about I don't know seven eight years, but the the frames all this this part of the the light here where the mounting is is all breaking up. So um, you can see it's absolutely covered in dust, which is disgusting, isn't it? Let's give that a dust. So, um, yeah, this is the thing with modelling. When you're doing lots of sanding and stuff and all the work I do with resin, the dust I create is absolutely incredible. So, um, which is why I'm actually thinking about having my painting in another area, because the dust and painting is becoming a bit of a, a problem. But I guess I won't be doing resin forever. So anyway, I'm waffling. So, yeah, I have done some painting off camera because I like to use my magnifier. And when I show you these... Little guys, you'll see what I mean. They're all done now and painted. So they're not the best. I'm not a figure painter. Um, get it focused. But we can see that basically we've got the colours on there. So we've got like a grey green suit. Uh, those belts are actually brown, but they look green in the camera right now. We've got the white helmets. We've got the faces on there. We've got the boots. And the hands, I was going to do them gloved. But um, I looked at a few images and it looked like... The images I could find, even from the early days of Vietnam and stuff, the pilots didn't actually wear gloves. So there's a couple there with gloves. Maybe they're supposed to and they don't. I don't know. But um, they don't seem to wear gloves. I guess they do do very long missions. So I guess gloved hands get a bit sweaty and clammy. So they tend not to wear them. I don't know about these days, but I've been looking for early photos and that's where I found the colours. The instructions actually tell you to paint the... The uniforms or the overalls green um, the, the, the images I saw there are kind of grey green colour so I've I've kind of mixed that myself and I used the palette as I showed you earlier put some water in get the different colours I've also done the red headrests on the cockpit not very accurate those headrests are more the shape of the later seats I think um, no sorry I'm talking about my uh, bottom again they're the correct shape, but they do seem to look as though they're sticking out a bit too much. So, uh, but they're red anyway, and they are only red on the front faces. They're not sort of a red cushion. So that was uh, some of the things I found. And you can also see on there how those decals have gone down now with the um, with the uh, microsole. And also, I've I've done I've given the whole lot and the and the guys I've given them a, a flat coat or a, a coat of semi gloss varnish just to kind of seal everything in. Because the next thing I'm going to do now is give the pilots a wash and now I'm going to do an oil wash which is something some of you may have seen this is a very old set of uh, Reeves oil colours okay so as you can see they're very old I've had them for absolutely years they're probably I don't know they could be 30 years old they're, they're very old I know that uh, I can't see a date on there or anything so but they, they could well be 30 years old so I'm going to get my paper back to protect the the working area and what I'm going to do is make up a wash on here so I'm going to use oil paint and I'm going to use the black and the brown to make up a dirty wash and I'm going to use now what I do if you're doing oils you need to keep your stuff separate and I've got a pot here that I keep everything in so I've got my odorless thinners don't use turpentine, use odorless thinners, as I've said to you before. And then I've got brushes here that I keep purely for doing this. You do not want to be mixing up your oil brushes with your acrylic brushes because you will get some funny effects. So um, when you get a brush which is a bit knackered, I mean, that is just going beyond the joke, isn't it, if you look at that one. But it's good for some uh, for some weathering effects. I mean, look at that one there. <laughs> you know, some... Anyway, uh, it's like a sort of 19... 50s Michael, 1960s Michael Jackson, isn't it, that one? Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, basically um, I'm going to use, probably use this brush here. Okay, and what we're going to do is an upturned Tamiya pot, as we always do. Just give it a wipe off, make sure there's nothing on there. And I'm going to 
remove the top of my thinners and we'll get some that top is stuck on so we'll get some of the brown oil paint on here just get a tiny one well, a bit too much now but never mind there we go bit of the brown oil paint on there and we can see we've got some oil there which isn't the the best what you normally do is put this on cardboard first and then the oil would soak away and then I'm gonna put a spot of black so we can make a black dirty wash now you can also get sets of oils um, from Abtalum and all sorts of different manufacturers so put some oil in there there's plenty of oil and what I'm making now is a, it's like a it's not I don't want to wash it's dirty thinners if you like and what I'm after is a sort of dirty brown wash which is really really thin and you know basically opaque oh no am i looking for the word opaque no i want it translucent i want it to, I want, it's hardly it's it's not very thick is what i'm trying to say which is not the same as can be said for me obviously because uh, i'm not sure of the meaning of opaque because i am very thick right so we've got that there and we're just going to test that on a piece of another some another piece of something before we um before we go further so i'll get this b52 nose here and i'll just try it on here and see what it's like and we can see it's very very thin it's chasing down that panel line beautifully so that's just what we want so get my cloth and remove it just like that that's gone so um that's just what we want so uh i'll take one of my pilots and I'm just going to brush this all over, just like so. And this will basically sort of outline all of the, um, the features on the pilot. So what I can do then is take a clean cotton bud, make sure it's clean. You don't want anything else on it. I could just roll this over the helmet. Who misses? Just remove any excess from there but you can see now that what's happened is the oil has gone into the face and it's given some features it's given a, a shadow around the helmet around his face it's given a shadow between his fingers and it's kind of just softened all the demarcations between the different colors okay but what we don't want is a load of brown stain all over the helmet we just want a bit of a shadow around that visor area there okay now the pictures I've looked at the newer pilots seem to have like goggles on their helmet but the older ones it just seems to be like a deflector sort of thing and maybe there's a visor up inside it I don't know so I'm not gonna I was gonna paint that gloss black but I'm not gonna do that I'm sure somebody in the comments will be able to tell me what it's actually for the trouble is by the time you tell me it will be too late because this will be all probably, the fuselage will probably be all closed up. So here's our black guy. So this is going to look really cool. There we go. And again, well, I'll show you this in a minute when it's dried and you'll be amazed at how good it looks. And then I'm going to give them a matte varnish just to take away any gloss. But straight away, if I, if you look at these two eyes here, the one without the wash and the one with the wash, you know, the difference is, uh, is quite remarkable. You can see that wash is gathering up in all the creases and all the clothing. You can see the, the, the gentle sort of shading around the helmet. Yeah, so um, well worth doing. Definitely well worth doing. So just brush this on. This is our gunner guy at the back of the plane, tail gunner. God, that must have been a lonely job. Can you imagine when they want, if they went on a long mission? This poor guy sat back there on his own for like God knows how many hours. I mean, I know when they did uh, Desert Storm, they did a 35 hour mission, but of course the, the G's and the H's didn't have a tail gunner. So unless it's a model collect G where you do have a tail gunner, but you actually cover the glazing up Solid, you don't have it clear. Sorry, model collector, I'm being naughty now. So there we go, remove 
removing the oils from the helmet make it make the helmet sort of pop a little bit and I think I might put a bit of, well after I've given it a matte coat I think I might put a bit of gloss varnish around the helmets just to make them stand out a bit so there we go so I'll show you that again in a minute when it's when they're dried in the meantime I am going to do the same thing in fact I think I'll add some black I think I'll add a spot of black just to make it a bit darker this is also wasteful because I'm only going to use this for a tiny little bit and then it'll be uh, soaked up in a cloth and thrown away so a bit of black here let that go let that dissolve down that'll give us a thicker black wash which I think now is too thick so I need to add some more odorless thinners like so So I've now shown you when we did the undercarriage and everything if you remember I showed you how to do it with the enamels and now I've shown you now how to do it with the oils. So a lot of people have got all oil paints lying around. Now what I'm going to do now this is going to be slightly different because I want to be a bit more careful. So what I'm going to do, I've got a rag here you can see, a cloth. So what I do is I just touch the brush onto that paper towel just to remove most of it and then when I touch it on here I'm going to paint this all over actually, I'm not going to be careful, paint this all over. When I touch it on here, it's not flooding it, what you don't want to do is absolutely flood it. So just touch it on there, get the most of it off, and then we go around these headrests, like so. And let the wash go down in what I'm assuming are the ejector rails, the ejection seat rails. down the sides there we go let's get some in there Give that, I'm going to flood that area there because I want it to sort of become a bit of a feature. And then once again, I'm going to come along with my cotton bud and just basically roll it over those headrests because I don't want them to be too tarnished, but I want to give them a bit of a, a sort of, I don't know, a, a, a kind of a realistic shadow, if you like. Is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. There we go, we can roll it over those instrument panels because we don't want wash on them. And you can see that if you just dab your cotton bud on, rather than wipe it, you can kind of leave a, a kind of mottled effect. Do the same on the top of those seats. And it kind of gives you a, a kind of realistic look, if you know what I mean. Now, please don't make comments below saying, what's the point, you're not going to see any of it. The reason I'm doing this is because it's a beginner's build and I want to show you basically how these effects are achieved. So when you come along to do your wheelbase in your Su-27, you know what to do. Okay. Because I can't do a beginner's video build for every model I make. Just be, uh, you'll be crazy. So there we go. Now I just want to make sure, because I don't remember doing it, I want to make sure I got some stain on the, no I didn't, I want to make sure I got some stain on these seats at the back. On their backs. Just so they kind of match the seat they're going up against. These seats, it's kind of like a seat. It's it's on these D's, it's a weird looking thing. If you check your references, it's a funny looking thing. It's like a of course these guys didn't have an ejection seat, you had to jump out. Um the tail gunner. But basically, um they kind of had a seat and it was kind of strapped to a frame that shot them out. And 
It wasn't like an ejection seat as we know it in an F14 or something. It was a weird thing. I can't remember what it was. Was it an Aces 2 or something? I can't remember now. But um, there we go. We don't need to clean the brush off because we're only going to be using it for oils and washes and stuff. So that can just go back in our pot like that. And then our odorless thinners can go back in the pot like that. And I don't believe we have anything else we want to add a wash to. So basically we can just now take a cloth I'll take a piece of, I've got the old serviettes, and we just soak that up, and there we go, that's gone. So we can just soak that up and get rid of it. Now because it's odorless thinners, we can put it in the bin and it doesn't stink the house out. If you've used enamel thinners, put it in a dustbin. Um, if you're doing this just before you go to bed, you'll do that. You'll soak it up in a rag, chuck it in the bin, you wake up in the morning and the house will stink of enamel thinners, which I think smells disgusting. And I know I've had a couple of people comment that they, they agree with me. It absolutely stinks. So there you go. So there we go. That's had a wash on there. Now I'm looking at this now and it looks like it's a bit built up. It won't matter on this because it's hidden behind the pilots. But uh, because this is a, a sort of how to video all the way through. I'm just going to show you how to move it around and get rid of it and stuff and there you go. So there we are. Now I don't know if these pilots have started drying yet. They've started drying but you can see there the effect you've got when you start to lose the sheen. You've got a nice effect. Now I can see also there's a heavy build up there so I'm just going to take, take my cotton bud and remove paint from his hand. There we go. They've always got this stupid stance. I don't know why in plastic model aircraft, they always have the guy sat there. I mean, they're all the same, all three of them. They're all sat there with their hand on their knee and <laughs> it's like they're swearing allegiance or something. Crazy, absolutely crazy. So anyway, here we go. So they're ready once they're dry to get a matte coat. That's gonna get a matte coat, the cockpit, once that's dry. And then we can put it all in the fuselage. And I think then we can put the fuselage together. But before we do that, we need to look at these bomb bay doors. Right, so we've got our bomb bay doors. And as you know, they're working. So we kind of pull them out a bit or whatever. And then they open. There you go. So we kind of get stuck on a bit of flash or something. Yeah, there's a bit of flash there that I didn't notice. So I'm just going to clean that off there. That's it, a lot better now. So you just... You just kind of pull them out like so and knock my pilots off of my stands here because it's so long. So basically, yeah, we're just going to pull that out. And there we go. We've got the uh, working doors. Now, a B-52 on the ground will have its doors open. But unfortunately, the Bombay you get in this is a bit of a joke. So this one's going to have its door closed. And because we've got pilots in it, we can do what we want because they might be doing hydraulics checks. And yet yeah, it's got a tail gunner in there. But he might be doing checks on his gun control equipment. Yeah, so we can do what we want. So no one can say, that B-52 on the ground would have its bomb bay doors open. Yeah, well, not if they've got pilots in and they decided to shut them. Because if the engines are idling and they've still got, got, or just turned off and they've still got hydraulic pressure, they could keep them closed. Yeah? Yeah, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. So because all this detail here is horrible, toy-like, and because... The gaps are massive and everything. I'm going to have mine closed up. So basically we need to glue these doors closed in this position. And then we're going to make sure we've got a nice straight line across here when we come to join them together, join the fuselage halves together. Because although there would be a seam there, um, we still want to get the fuselage joined together in that point and not have it all flopping about. So um, we need to somehow make sure this is all wedged shut and flush on the bottom. And then we can sand these these little lumps on here on the Bombay doors, they're just basically to stop them falling in. They're not actually to scale. They're not correct. So you can get rid of them. So um, I think my dog's about, dog's about to start barking. So I need to check on here if this is sprue nibs. I think that's a sprue nib there, but that definitely isn't there. That's a, some sort of antenna or something there. So um, we'll check on that after we've uh, got it all together. So... Somehow we need to get these Bombay doors to stay in this position. Now, if we look here, putting a piece of plastic across there isn't an option because the fuselage 
is actually thicker than the Bombay door. We, we, what we could do is just put a piece of plastic card across here and bridge it all together. But the Bombay door is thinner than the, or is it? I think the, yeah, the Bombay door is slightly thinner. Than, no, it's not. It actually is okay. We can do that. Shut up, Nigel, you are waffling. So what we'll do is we'll get a piece of our... Remember, I've told you at the beginning of this video, you need to get yourself some 05 millimeter or 20 thou plastic card because we're going to need it for the engines. So I will use only 20 thou plastic card throughout this build. I'm not going to have you go out and spend your life savings on different sizes of plastic card just to build this model because I appreciate this is for beginners. Now, if you want to have your Bombay doors open, then... Probably best switch off now and wait for part eight because I don't think I'll be doing much else in this video. Um, if you're going to have your bomb doors closed, then you might want to stick around. And if you like the sound of my voice because you're absolutely raving crazy, then just stick around anyway. So I'm going to get some 20,000 plastic card out and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to make these welded shut. I always keep my scraps of plastic card. There's a couple of bigger pieces on the top there, but in the bottom you can see we got all these tiny little pieces and these are the rings you get with your Oral-B Oral -B toothbrushes. They always come in handy for things. So um, basically I always keep my scraps of plastic card because when you want a small piece, you just take it from here rather than cutting it from a fresh sheet. Now I have got a fresh sheet of uh, 0.5, but I'm not going to get it out. I'm going to use this piece of here, which is all I can find. It's 20 thou thick or 0.5 millimeters. So what I'm going to do straight away is cut down here like so, a couple of cuts and it slices through and then I'm going to cut across here like so and then once you've scored it you can just snap it off like that and then I'm going to cut this piece in half, roughly in half this doesn't need to be scientific, it doesn't need to be precise, it just needs to be we need some tabs, that's all and then on the front here, on the front of the Bombay we should find we can put a piece of 20 card, thou card in the gap. Yes, we can. So basically on the front of the Bombay, I am going to slot a piece in just to fill the gap. So what we will do here, we will cut a piece here, which should be long enough for both sides. OK, so we can cut that away. I just cut that away there. Now we can break that off of there, that will just snap off, and that should snap off of there like that, okay, and then we can cut this in half, and that will be enough for both sides. Okay, so we've got one piece there per side, and one piece there per side. So we'll take our Tamiya Extra Thin, okay, and what we're going to do, now... Because I can get in there and it's easy to do, I am just going to remove that little lump on there. I think I'll take a coarse sanding stick. This is one of my Infini Zebra sticks. So I'll take a coarse sanding stick and just remove that bump and some paint from the edge. There we go. So that's that done. Okay, and then I'll take one of these pieces of plastic card Hold that over the top. Now make sure you don't have your finger underneath. If you have your finger underneath, the glue will capillary into your finger and you will be um, making a mess of your model. Now the inside of this is slightly curved. So what I'm going to do is slightly curve the plastic card. Just give it a little tweak, just like that, just to give it a little curve and it will help it go down a lot easier. So we will Put that like that. Now, if you are doing this, stop right now and think to yourself 10 times, do you really want to weld your bomb bay, bay, bomb bay door shut? And my answer is yes, I do. So I'm putting that in there like that. If you notice it's sticking out on the edge, that doesn't matter. We can trim that afterwards. So there we go. That's that done. Okay. And then on the front of the bomb bay, we've got these pieces here. And we can literally slot them in like that into that gap 
just like so okay and then just have it like that and then glue down that side we got some glue down that side and there we go that's nicely flooded in now so that should lock those doors in place and then afterwards we'll have to do some sanding and a little bit of scribing as well and we're also going to have to do some filler work or whatever down here to sort out these great big slots where they have the hinges and what we might do actually is bend those legs out as well and the other thing I'm going to do here is put some glue on these hinges just to let it know what we're after just to let it know that we mean business okay and if like me you're finding that's not quite flush there we can just push the back down a bit okay you can squeeze the plastic card and because it's got lots of glue on it it will be quite soft and it will deform and it will go where you want it to go don't be scared to be a bit brutal with it and the other thing I want to do is push this plastic card up against that bulkhead and if it doesn't want to go we'll take another little piece of scrap just like that and we can chuck that in there another drop of extra thin and there we go and that will make that one a lot more solid now and we just make sure that Bombay door is flush along that edge so we can just make sure that edge is straight okay and that will sit there and dry just like that it's that easy so we've now got our Bombay doors bolted shut and now we'll do the same on the other side so we come along and we open the door take our sanding stick Remove any lumps, bumps, paints or whatever, paint or whatever should I say. Check our thickness is about the same and it is. Put the slight curve into the plastic card. Put the plastic card in place. Make sure your finger isn't under there. Plenty of glue. And then get the plastic card to sit in place just like that. And there we go. And that will just sit over that like, gap like that. And there we go, that's that done. Now the front doesn't appear to have a gap like the other side did. So what we'll do on here, I'm going to take this piece of plastic card and just cut a slight curve into it just like so just like that and now that should line up better oh look at that that should line up better with the Bombay door okay like there so I can now just sit that in there make sure my fingers away from the gap drop some extra thin in make sure we've got some on the door don't be shy with it I'll just get that in oh it has found a way through so obviously it's okay on the edge but there's no gap as you move towards the outside of the aircraft so we'll push that down if anything we'd rather have the Bombay door a bit proud than shallow because it's easier to sand it down than it is to fill it Okay, and then once again with our rule, we can make sure we're straight along that edge, and we are. So there we go. I can also see we've got quite a big gap there. So I'm going to take a piece of plastic card like so, push that into that gap. If I had to go the other way, there we go. And then just put some glue on to weld that into place. 
And again, we'll just put some glue on these hinges. Okay, and there we go, that's that done. And there's one more thing I want to do just to make sure that this area here, because we know the ends are welded up, but the, the area here might be quite um, might be quite flexible. So once once this glue on the ends is dried, what we're going to do is try and push these hinge pieces out to fill these gaps here. We've got these massive slots. And then um, we'll put a piece of sprue along here, a piece of the sprue from the kit box, and we'll glue it along there on the door and the um, and the fuselage, and that will make sure that's really, really solid. And then once it's all gone off, we can cut those excess bits of plastic off, sand it all down, and we'll get a nice joint. There we go. Just to show you one more thing here. Um, if you want thinner card and you don't have it, because I basically want to wedge something in this great big gap here, but 20 thou is too thick to go in there. So what you can do is take a coarse sanding stick and you can sand away the edge of the plastic card and make it thinner. Now this is really poor because it's got a, a hole that's been miscut in it. I'm going to have to break into my new sheet of plastic card, which I don't want to do because it's my last one. Um, so basically what we can do then, I'm just, I keep knocking these pilots off my paint stand. I should just move the paint stand perhaps. No, that'd be far too clever, wouldn't it? Nigel? So basically now we can, here I go again, we can basically, that will slot in there now because I've sanded the edge away. So what I can do now is take my knife and cut along here and remove the plastic card from the rest of the scrap that's on here, basically. And that will now wedge in that gap, as you can see here. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to basically cut that off. To about the right length because that lug's in the way and I don't want to move that remove that lug until everything is set hard so basically I can push that in there now and it's still slightly too long but we'll cut an angle so it goes in okay there we go and we'll take our extra thin. And brush down the side. And there we go, we've got that gap now taken care of in there. And I think I might do the same on this one as well. So I'll do that off camera, you don't need to see it do you twice. In fact, I've got a little piece of plastic card hanging around there, too thick to go in. So I could just come along and, whoops, dropped it. I could just come along and just sand it. Okay, turn around, help hold the sanded bit. Okay, that's that thin down. And now that should just slot in there with these here we go okay so that's slotted in there again take the extra thin sorry for keeping leaning across the screen but it's where I keep my glues just put some glue on there and Jess is sat here to my left hand side she really wants to go and play ball do you want to go and play ballie Jess does Jess want to go and play ballie what's she saying She's not talking to me, obviously. There we go. So we'll get the glue out of the way, put the fuselage halves down. And now I need to let that go off. And what I'm going to do is leave it till the morning, because right now it is Thursday night. So I'll leave this until Friday morning, or if the weather's nice, maybe even Saturday morning. And uh, then we'll do some work on these horrible hinges and get some sprue in there and get it all sorted. See you in a minute guys, or however long it is. Okay, I'm back, and it's not the next day, it's the uh, same day, but later in the evening. 
So I've got some sprue here which I've cut from the um, from the sprues of the model. So we can uh, keep this here. I don't want that piece that's too thick. We'll have this piece here which is nice and thin. So uh, yeah, we've got these these sprues. So I'm going to cut these um, these nibs off of here, just like so. And I know I said I shouldn't be using Tamiya cutters, but these are the ones that are broken anyway. So take my zebra stick and just sand away those lumps because we want a nice smooth straight surface to glue down to. We don't want anything uh, don't want anything lumpy in there. Okay so there we go. Get rid of the dust. And then what we're going to do is just sand the end square and then I can push this in here and I need to cut it off roughly there where my fingers are. There we go. So that is now going to sit in there like that and we'll glue that down and that will form the, the kind of base to support this gear door because without it as you can see here it's quite flexible in the middle. We want to get rid of that. Um, I have actually gone around and tried to push these hinges out to make them flush with the with the surface but they don't seem to want to budge. So um, in fact, what I might try and do is flex this out. If we break one off, we break one off, it doesn't matter. Put the knife in behind it and then push it down. You see it just sort of springs back in. It doesn't seem to do anything. So um, put the knife in behind there and push it down. It doesn't seem to do anything at all. It does, maybe it makes a small difference. So we'll push that one down. And then we'll get in behind that one and bend it up. It's a little bit less to fill, but we're going to have to put some sprue glue or something in there to fill them. So anyway, we've got that now. Basically, we want to get it sort of flush with the fuselage so we've got a nice smooth line. And then we can put that in there. Basically what we're going to do, we're going to glue it into place. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue it to the... It's actually got a bit of a bow in it. So we use that bow to our advantage. And I'm actually going to glue it to the... To the Bombay door first. So... We'll get plenty of glue in there. So that's got that locked into place. Like so. Okay, so that's in there like that. Now that bomb door is pretty flush because that sprue is kind of holding it there. So I'm going to put some more glue down in behind. And now we're going to glue that piece of sprue to the actual fuse lodge. We're actually gluing it to the hinge retainer piece that we put in earlier. doesn't seem too keen on staying in place but that's okay we'll just hold it there for a second as I said earlier if you're not gonna be locking your bomb doors closed then you can fast forward through this bit just ignore it okay so we've got the glue there doing its job welding it in place and if you don't know what I mean by welding, it's because although we call it glue, it's not actually glue. It's, a, it's actually forming a chemical reaction between the two pieces of plastic and melting them. So they kind of fuse together. So it's kind of welding, if you like. I think what I'm going to do is cut that piece of sprue off at the end there because it's, it's up on the... Um, let's get the knife. It's sat up on that plastic card. So we'll pull it up and get rid of it. There we go. And that should make it fit a bit better. Get some cement in there and just lock it in place. There we go. Job done. Here's Jess just come in the room and it's nearly midnight. 
2358. Again, I'm hitting those pilots. So we'll just leave that to kind of do its thing. Do the other side. So again, we'll cut these sprue nibs off. You're pinging around the room. Just cut that rubbish off the end there. And I think this time I'll cut it a bit more accurately. So we're going to cut it off there. Be careful handling these fuselage halves because you don't want to break those undercarriage legs off. So, okay, just a little tiny bit to trim off the end. I think I dropped that on the floor. No, I didn't. I dropped it on my trousers. So, I'm actually wearing trousers. The first time I've worn trousers for a long time. I've been in shorts for weeks. So, um, there we go. So, we just sand off that pruning it with a nice coarse sanding stick and then we we'll do the same again we'll just plop that down in there and it's got a bit of a bow in it we we'll use that to our advantage there we are so some glue in there we'll put a drop in there and we'll put some up front like so, just hold that in place until it kind of locks itself down. Be wary, I had a glue come through there, you see, and I touched it. If you do get that, don't touch it, don't try and do anything with it, just let it dry, and then you can sand it out afterwards. If you start messing with it, you'll just make things worse. That's the only downside to these liquid cements is they uh, they do capillary beautifully into gaps and unfortunately your finger holding your model is a perfect gap. And you can hear the clock now, midnight, there we go. So it's Friday again. And there we are. So that bomb door is now in there, like that. There we go. There we are. So that's both of those done. And like I say, what we'll do is leave them for five or ten minutes. We'll let the glue kind of do its thing and gel off, and then we can just see if it needs any adjustment and move them around. In the meantime, I'll show you the pilots. I've given them a flat coat and given their helmets a gloss coat. I think their helmets need another gloss coat because they're not very shiny. But we can see now that they look much better now they've got a flat coat on them and you can see how the wash has gone into all the corners and nooks and crannies you can see the belt standing out a lot more now okay, buckles are there in silver so there they are all looking good I'll give their helmets another gloss coat because they're not particularly shiny but that'll do and I've also done the um, the, the cockpit give that a flat coat as well so that's looking a lot better and I tried something on the instrument panel that kind of worked I put some blobs of gloss varnish on it and then after about five minutes after it started to dry I just wiped it over and what I've tried to do is give the instrument panel some texture and if I can catch it in the light I don't think I'm going to be able to you might be able to see no I can't catch it in the light so you can see it but basically it's got like a a kind of rough finish to it now as it would have with the dials and stuff on there so it's not just a a flat sheet so for what you're going to see of it it doesn't really matter i don't think but um 
I just it's something I just thought I'd give it a go. It's just an idea I had. So uh, there we go. So I'm going to give those bomb doors ten minutes. Then I'll be back. After ten minutes, I had a look and they were still a bit floppy and not really the, the gluing down very well. So I've put some sprue glue in here now and um, just basically brushed it into that that gap between the sprue and the actual fuselage itself. So that seems to have uh, worked and made things a lot more rigid because basically this we want is a rigid joint. We don't want it to all start moving around. After, in fact, I'm going to put some more sprue glue in there. We don't want it all to start moving around after we um, after we uh, bolt the fuselage halves together because then what will happen then, this is the sprue glue with the uh, die in it. I'm only using this because there's more of it in there. Um, so basically, yeah, the, we don't want it to start moving around after we got it together because we can't, we won't be able to uh, get in here to make it solid. So we'll we'll make it solid now, and then um, and then we'll be sorted, as it were. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I mean it. it, it it's kind of long-winded and a bit sort of over the top with the explanations. Um, but that's the whole point of a beginner's video is to sort of show you everything rather than just, you know, I've just done this, I've just done that. Unfortunately, when it comes to the small detail painting like with the pilots, I can't really do it live on camera because I can't film and work under the uh, magnifier. So... I'm sorry about that, but when it comes to the general sort of building like I'm doing now, I want to try and show you everything. Really, I don't really want to do anything off camera. So there we go. So we've got plenty of sprue glue in there now. Now that will penetrate and really get in there and lock those together. You could use super glue as well, but just be wary. Super glue, I mean, this is one of the problems with 100% resin kits if you just use super glue. Um, super glue can be quite brittle. Super glue glues the parts together. So you have a layer of adhesive between two parts that's holding them together. Uh, sprue goo, liquid cement, or you, you know the the Revell, the Revell cement, all of them. What they're doing is actually welding the plastic together. They're melting the faces, and then the the plastic all fuses and sort of melds into one and becomes one. So that's basically what's happening here. So basically what you could find if you put sprue glue, um, super glue down there, you could find yourself sanding, and then you'll hear a crack. And that's it, it's broken away, there's nothing you can do. And you can't really go in afterwards with your welding glues because the, the super glue has formed a film on the plastic that stops the welding glues breaking down the plastic. So uh, what you must do if, if you are going to use super glue, um, just lock things in place. You put a couple of dabs in, hold, the, hold the, the part in place, let it sit there, let it lock, and then go in with your liquid cements afterwards to weld it. Um, things like undercarriage legs and some fragile items on your model like pito tubes or whatever you might want to use super glue on them purely because if they get knocked they will just break at the joint they won't actually snap the part so if this was an undercarriage leg which was joined in there say you could use some super glue in there if it got knocked it would snap and it would snap at that joint rather than snap or bend and twist so um there we go so i'm gonna let those go off now and then I'll be back, and I think that will be tomorrow morning because um, I think we've uh, I think we've been on this long enough now today, and also all these fumes are starting to hurt my eyes from the glue. So probably because I'm tired and old and fat and ugly and everything else that goes with being old, and bold and you know. Right. See you in a minute. Okay, we're back and it's the next day now and this is all nice and solid and all that sprue goo's all got it all welded in so those doors are nice and solid now. So um, let's get my little cutters and basically we're going to remove this excess plastic card from here like so and then we can do the same over here. Okay, and then I'm going to take a coarse sanding stick. And just 
move off. You can see on there where we're sanding, where the paint is staying behind. I'm just going to remove the paint from these edges just to help the glue. We don't need to, you don't have to do this. As I said, these hot glues will work through the paint, but um, if it's easy to remove like it is here, then you may as well. So that's all nice and smooth now. And then we'll do the same on this side. Careful not to touch our sand and stick on the edge of these landing gear bay roofs. We basically just want to make sure that the, the plastic card is not going to interfere with some broken off pins here. Look. These um, these location pins, the, the pins that go into the holes in the other side, if, if you put your parts together and you find that you um, that your parts are misaligned, which happens a lot, just cut them off, okay? They're there to aid the assembly of the parts, but they can sometimes be a hindrance, particularly with stuff like bombs or drop tanks. Um, you know, very often I find that they... They actually make the parts misalign, so you're better off without them. So we'll blow that dust out of there. We'll rub it in with your finger, whatever you want to do. Um, blow that dust out of the back end. And there we go. So that's now done. So let's just give our bench a wipe down. Right. So there we go. Um, just been looking at the comments from the videos. Uh, I know that in part five, I recommended that um, you thin stone or res with um, Mr. Colour Leveling Thinners. And somebody has come on, Dave has come on and said you can't do it. I must be honest, I'd never tried it. I think I said that before, I'd never tried it. But I, I looked on the internet and discovered that that's the way people do it. So because somebody said you can't, I've tried it and it works beautifully I sprayed that about 10 minutes ago and that's like 50 50 mr. color leveling thinners and Steiner res and it has gone down beautifully now ignore all the regular shapes and everything you can see because there's all sorts of decals and all sorts under here um, but basically that is you can see the stars and bars under there um, that is it gone down and it's lovely uh, so it does work so I replied to Dave and said I've just tried it and it works absolutely fine uh, another comment um, from Bill. Yeah, um, he's saying uh, he doesn't like the way I keep promoting premium hobbies. Uh, two things. One, I promote premium hobbies because he sends me a lot of stuff. Um, and I do reviews on it and stuff. And also, I get inundated with questions like, where did you get those sanding sticks from? Where can I get that glue from? Where can I get this from? Where can I get that from? If I tell you where it came from, and I tell you where, it, where I've got this, that and the other then it saves you asking me the questions because I get a lot of questions. Where can I get this? Where can I get that? You know, it's like I'll do a review on a kit and somebody will message me. They'll even send me an email and say, where can I buy that kit from? Uh, eBay. You know, it's like, it's not, it's not, the, the, the internet today is fantastic. I remember years ago I was building a replica racing car and I took two flights, one to France and one to Italy, to go and look at the real thing and take some measurements and stuff. These days, it would be a simple bing, 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 Google, and you'd be able to do it all from pictures online. You know, we must remember that years ago, as modelers, if we needed references, we had to go and buy a book, visit a museum, whatever. Now, bang, bang, bang on the internet, there's every picture of a B-52 you could ever dream of. So... When people ask questions like, where can I get this kit from? I'm kind of, you know, just. And the other thing is, is they often don't tell me where in the world they are. So they might say to me, where can I get this kit from? And I say, Antics have got seven in stock and they live in Zambezi. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. So anyway, enough waffling. So we're ready now to start looking at getting all this together. So the gun is just going to sit in the back end. And just it's going to go, was it fat on the top, skinny on the bottom, 
like so. So that's just going to sit in there. So the problem we're going to have there is that's just going to want to keep falling out when we put it together. Throughout. So I think we'll actually start with the back and glue the back first uh, with that in position. The cockpit is done with the instrument panel and everything here. That's all dry now. Now we need to look at getting these pilots in. So I'm going to get this these fuselage sections out of the way. And we'll get our pilots down. So that's our rear gunner. little blobs of blue tack so we can use them again okay so these guys can go in here so we're gonna have to um, get some of our extra thin and what I am gonna do here is just because it's such a small location area, I'm just going to remove the paint. Because remember, we've got paint. There's two coats of paint. There's clear coat. There's primer. There's all sorts on there. So we're just going to remove those there. And then underneath here, we've got no one. Um, there's nothing on there anyway. So I just want to check how these are going to fit. You should always dry fit everything anyway. And they're going to fit in there beautifully like that. So basically, let's get a blob of extra thin on there. Nice big drop. And then we can put that pilot in. I'm going to use one of these sticks just to push him sort of down and back onto that post. And then we'll get another big drop on there. We can put this guy in. It was exactly the same as the other one. So, as you can see, you've got two pilots both sat there with their right hand on their knee, their left hand on their chest, and um, both looking in exactly the same direction. So, yeah, not something you're going to see very much in reality, is it? So, they are now glued in place. Now, I'm a bit concerned about them coming out. So, I'm going to have to do something around their feet I think so I'm a bit concerned. if they fall out you see they're just going to end up falling inside the fuselage so I don't know if I can get some extra thin around their feet because I don't think you're going to see down there anyway I think I'll take this cockpit floor off of here. And I may be able to get in the, into here and get some more glue in. I want to. I really want to make sure these are really, really welded in. But I don't want to put any glue on the headrests or anything. Again, you could put them in with super glue, but remember what I've already told you: super glue is brittle and it will break easily. So there we go. They're both in there. So there you can see we've got our cockpit down with our pilot sat in there and uh, yeah I haven't done this for years as I said so we get the fuselage half that's got the holes in here and this little guy is going to sit in the back and he's going to glue into that those two holes there so I'm going to get some extra thin into there and then work the brush around and that will lift some of that paint out there we go you see and then we'll do the same down here and then I can pop this one in like so so he's just sat there with nothing around him but he's just uh, you'll just see his head and if you look down through the glazing, you'll see his body, but you're not going to see anything else. Okay, and I'm going to put another drop of extra thin around there because I really want to make sure it's in there solid. Do not want him coming out. There we go. Now, the instructions tell us to put the 
instrument panel. Let's grab the instructions. It tells us to put the instrument panel into the cockpit, onto the up the port side, and also the uh, the cockpit as well. So we need to get that done. So we'll grab our. side fuselage we get rid of our painting block and we will just remove some paint from the top of those legs and then we've got these L shapes here we can put plenty of extra thin into them just to give us an initial bite and then we'll put them down on there. See like that. So that's down over those pegs. And then we can get a big drop of extra thin into there. So that, that cockpit floor is properly glued in place. We don't want it coming out. Going forward. There we go, that's that in like that. So you can see that when you're looking through the through the glazing, you're not going to see very much at all. But um, you know, it's there. It's there, you know it's there, you've done it, you've enjoyed it, so uh that's the main thing. Now the instrument panel is gonna go in and this has a leg here like there should be a pin but there isn't um i'm wondering if i'm gonna be able to get that in afterwards no we'll put it in now so that's gonna maybe what i should do is put the instrument panel in first i think that would be a better idea That's just going to sit in there like that. Put a drop of glue in there, which doesn't hold it. I'm worried about the capillary action with the glue going up under my finger. And I think what I will do just to give it a start is just remove some paint from there. Probably the best thing to do, put a drop of glue in here, <coughs> like so. And then we will put the instrument panel. Oh, come on. In like that. And kind of hope it's going to grip. Drop a glue in behind here to hold it in place. Like so, and there we go. So I'm just going to check now with the other fuselage have that everything's going to line up. Because now what should happen is when we put it together, that should be butted up against there. So I'm going to go forward and then come back. Yeah, that's great. So you can see we've got a bit of a gap here on this side. So what I can do is probably the best thing to do there is to, and you're going to cringe at this, is take the instrument panel out and just give it a bend. I'm just going to give it a slight bend. Okay, drop more glue on there now because I've pulled it away. nice and tight up against there now and then when we put the other fuselage have on we should find that we've got there you go it's in the lovely now so we'll come up and forward so as not to disturb it so that's going to need some good drying time i didn't check to see if it was actually level did i Yes, 
Yes, it is. It, needs, it could go up a touch. I'm just going to push that up a touch, like so. Like I say, we can always do some work to blend it all in and everything. But um, there you go. That is that welded in there. So we'll put our cockpit back in. Once again. There we go. There's our cockpit with our instrument panel and everything in there. All looking cool. It must be the biggest air, uh, instrument panel of any aircraft <laughs> flying. Especially the older ones with all the analog dials on them. They're huge. So there we go. So just check the fuselage fit again. Make sure there's nothing. I mean, there's nothing in here to foul it, but just in case it's made too wide or whatever, it's not unheard of. Sliding it on, moving it backwards. There we go. As you can see it still needs a little tweak. If I hold the back of it, I may be able to just bend it like that. There we go. go fitting up nice and tight now so obviously when it comes to fitting the fuselage halves together we'll have to clamp this together and glue that first to make sure it's all uh, down because if that's a mess it'll look awful through the windows and there we can see inside there we can see our guys sat waiting for takeoff and then the hey lonely boy in the back sat there also looking to the left with his hand on his knee <laughs> so take these apart and I'm going to let that dry. Okay, so next up, we've got to get our clear parts in. Um, we've just got to put the two little windows in for our... Um, for our... Uh, this is the... Well, in the H, you've got the rear gunner. In the early H, you've got the rear gunner sat here. And in the other side, you've got the um, electronic warfare officer. But in this one, you've only got the electronic warfare officer because, of course, the gunner sat down the back. So these windows are just for him, I guess or her and um, basically what we're going to do is just pop these in and I'm going to use extra thin now normally with clear parts you wouldn't use extra thin but I'm going to because they're not very big and they're quite horrible anyway and when we put them in you can see that they're sitting proud of the surface okay so they're not really very nice at all but what we'll do is we'll get them in get them glued in solid and then once the glue's all dried, we can um, sand them back. So what I'm doing, I'm, if you notice, I'm, wa I'm walking up to the edge with the glue. I'm not going in on top. Okay, and then I'm going to give my little push down just to make sure it's in there. And just leave that to dry. And you can see there's no glue showing anywhere, but you can see that it is actually sticking out. So it's going to need sanding back. Okay, so that's in there like that now. The same on this side. Put this one in. These, these, these clear parts are horrible. You can see they've got a great big sink mark in the middle of them. They don't fit very well. Um, so what I'm doing is coming in with the glue up to the side. You can see a capillary around. Same again over here. Coming along up to the side and then just let the glue capillary around and then I'm going to give it a little nudge in the middle and you can see there the grey plastic showing through the black paint where the glue's attacked it and then we know we've got a good weld. Okay, so push it in from behind. And you can see it sticking out there in all sorts of shapes and fashions. So uh, you can see there it's sticking out massively. It's going to have to be carved back and sanded. Okay, so there we go. So we have to let that go off now. I'm just going to put a drop more glue in there just to make sure 
because we don't want them falling out. Get some more glue in the other side, just like so. You can see there I've got glue on the top of the glazing. Okay, don't touch it, don't do anything, just leave it. It'll be absolutely fine. If you just leave it, it'll be fine. If you touch it, it'll make a big mark. Okay, I mean, it's good, it's good glazing parts to practice on, really, because basically you're not going to see anything through them. It's just a black hole in there so um here we go so we're gonna let those go off and then we'll just quickly give them a tap and check they're all glued in solid and then uh, we'll get our fuselage halves glued together so we'll call that a day for this one this has been part seven and basically we have done our bombay doors we've painted up our pilots we've matte coated the cockpit and everything and got that all ready to go glued in our clear parts and um there we go. If you're building along with me, I think you've got quite enough to be getting on with for now. So I um, hope you've enjoyed this this uh, this segment and uh, look forward to seeing you for part eight. And in part eight, we're looking at getting the fuselage together. And that's going to be quite a major task because, as you can see, massive area, loads of gluing to do. And uh, we've got to try and get it as nice as we can because we want to keep the sanding to a minimum because of our raised panel lines. And then people have requested if I show how you do the race panel line repairs, I will do that. So thanks for watching, guys. As I say, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe and, uh, and notifications bell. And I'll see you all soon for part eight. Bye for now.